Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us again come back and do the confirmation analysis of substituted cyclohexanes. So far we have done the dimethyl cyclohexanes that is our representative example and this can be 1 1, this can be 1 2, this can be 1 3 and this can be 1 4 and in 1 1 there is no question of cis or trans uh, arrangement in 1 2 you have cis and trans dimethyl cyclohexane here also cis and trans and this is also cis and trans ok. So, this cis and uh, trans they differ in energy they differ in their optical activity just to summarize a little bit what I have I have told you that 1 to cis dimethyl cyclohexane exists as a non-resolvable DL pair because by flipping it goes to its mirror image and the trans compound is however optically active. This is the trans compound, the preferred configuration of the trans that is optically active. For the 1, 3 system, what is the 1, 3 system that you have, you have suppose cis, so cis means the best uh, arrangement is both equatorial and in the both equatorial system you have a you have a plane of symmetry see if you write it in the planar form form so you have this is alpha and that is alpha so that is cis so you have a plane of symmetry passing through it here a plane of symmetry which passes through this carbon and this carbon so a plane of symmetry is there okay so this is optically inactive that is the cis compound the trans compound if you draw the planar form, you will see that 1 beta and 1 alpha. So, it does not have the plane of symmetry. What it has is a C2 symmetry. If you make a 180 degree uh, inversion, you will get the this methyl in the beta position. Okay. Uh, and so, the preferred confirmation is see either this is axial and this is equatorial. Now, you can invert it very easily because inversion gives us gives the same type of arrangement one axial one equatorial. So, this is there and now the equatorial is mm, sorry this is here and the equatorial is there and ultimately I have shown that earlier that these two are same by having that mnemonic formula and then finally, I showed that the mirror image is different this is the mirror image. sorry this is the mirror image here and there and these are non superimposable. This is entirely different from the cis 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane where flipping gives the mirror image here flipping gives the same molecule, but the mirror image is different. So, this will be optically active. So, it, this is a resolvable DL pair. Then we come to the 1 4 system a resolvable DL pair. Okay. Now, let us come to the 1 4 system. So, 1 4 dimethyl. Now, first of all it is a it can be cis or it can be trans. So, 1 4 means either see you put one methyl here if it is beta then the cis is another beta. So, this is one form the other form is this is beta and this is alpha. So, this is cis and this is trans. Now, what is there? confirmation the confirmation is you write the chair form and then you see where are the groups. So, this is suppose the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 1 is there that is methyl and to make beta at the 4 position. So, you have to have the the second methyl group in the equatorial position. So, this is the cis compound because both are beta if you invert it.
what you get is the inversion looks like this. So, that is the compound. See, these are the same again the same molecule, they are topomers, they are same molecules, they are topomers, and this is optically inactive. You do not have to draw a mirror image because I could see a plane of symmetry passing through this. See, this is the plane of symmetry between 1 and 4. That means, the vertical plane containing these methyl groups and passing through 1 and 4 is the sigma plane. Okay. So, this is optically inactive. The same is the trans compound. Here also there is a plane of symmetry passing through 1 4. Only the conformation is different. The conformation is. So, now this is beta. So, this methyl is here and the fourth methyl is also here. So, this is not the proper conformation because this suffers from the uh, four gauche butane interactions because two one axial gives two. So, two axials give four. So, it immediately flips and the major form will be the will be this one. This is the major or preferred conformation simply because both the groups are in the equatorial position. So, this does not introduce any additional energy because the anti form of the butane is regarded as having the 0 point energy. Okay. So, that finishes up this one this dimethyl systems. Now, it is not always true that the same thing will be followed if you have other substituents instead of dimethyl. Okay. Like suppose there is 1 3 dihydroxy cyclohexane. Now, what happens in case of cis 1 to dimethyl cis 1 to dimethyl that means, 1 is cis means both are equatorial right because that is the cis and that is will be that will be the most stable form because if you invert both the groups will be axial. Okay. So, in dimethyl system this is the major form and this is the minor form. Okay. So, where are the methyls now? The methyls are one is here and the other is there, okay. but this is in the dimethyl system again I repeat this is the preferred, but when these methyls are replaced by which then it is seen that there is a substantial proportion of the there of the of the diaxial conformation also and the reason is that this diaxial conformation is stabilized by intramolecular hydrogen bond so now different forces when there are methyls there is no such uh, in intramolecular forces, but here because they are both OHS. So, there is a possibility of a hydrogen bond, but only when they are in the axial conformation. So, when both are axial that means, diaxial conformation. So, now there will be a substantial proportion I do not I do not know the exact proportion of this, but I can say there is a substantial proportion of diaxial proportion of the diaxial conformer that is for 1 3 dihydroxy. So, similarly, so it is not always true that the diaxial or the or the conformation where the number of axial groups are more are always less stable that is not true. It depends on the type of substituents like one example I gave this 1 3 dihydroxy uh, cyclohexane okay, or cyclohexane 1 3 diol. Now, if we have the halogen compound. Suppose, I have 1 to dihalo systems cyclohexane 1 to dihalo cyclohexane. Now, if I have the cis compound then what happens? Then 1 will be this suppose it is okay, x let us write x and this is x. Okay. And if I write the trans compound So, these are the preferred conformations of course, this 
if you flip it, it, it can flip and it, if, it, if you flip the relative uh, relative the relationship that does not change because the diagonal angle still remains uh, the diagonal angle still remains 60 degrees the c x and c x only this x becomes equatorial and this x becomes axial. So, the energy remains the same because it is the same situation one axial one equatorial, but if you come to this one. So, if you flip now. So, what happens you get a diaxial x here and x there. Okay. Now, interestingly here the question is here both are 50 50. Okay, it is the same like 1 3 diameter cyclohexan case it exists as a non resolvable DL pair. Here usually what happens in dimethyl system this is the preferred conformation and this is the, the least preferred. Eh? I told you about by showing the uh, I told you about this by showing you the number of gauche butane interactions that are present in these systems. Okay? When these are methyl so, you have one extra gauche butane unit when you have diaxial then you have 4 extra gauche butane unit and so ultimately the difference becomes 3 gauche butane interactions is the difference in energy when x are methyl, but when x is halogen then what happens there is now repulsion this is delta minus that is delta minus. So, now there will be repulsion between these two x's and that will make again the same thing that will because in this conformation that repulsion is gone because they are anti to each other. So, there will be again a substantial proportion of this substantial because of the that intramolecular repulsion between the excess the dipole dipole repulsion is is no longer there if you put it in the diaxial conformation. So, there are cases where diaxial uh, can be uh, can be also uh, present in significant amount. Okay. And also there are molecules where the reaction needs the substituents in the diaxial conformation. Like if you have a CO 2 H here and a CO 2 H there. Okay. This is the cis cyclohexane 1 3 dicarboxylic acid. If I want to make an anhydride out of this, because they are far apart and intramolecular anhydride formation. So, what it will do? It will flip and this becomes CO 2 H and this also becomes CO 2 H. Now, you see they are close in close proximity. So, they can easily form the anhydride. So, in the anhydride both these are in the axial conformation are in the axial orientation because because that is the way to make the anhydride for anhydride formation they have to be close by and this is the only way they can interact with each other. But actually the stable conformer is the diaxial is the diequatorial uh, cyclohexane. Okay. So, there are cases where the axial orientation also can be important. So, I gave you few examples. Okay. Now, let us uh, go to another system just increase our knowledge a little bit about this do not restrict it as in the cyclohexane system. Uh, let us complicate the situation a little bit add another cyclohexane which looks like this. Okay. So, another cyclohexane I added on to this this fused cyclohexane systems is called decaline they are called decaline you can call them as parhydronaphthalene that is also possible because it comes from naphthalene. So, if you have naphthalene and if you completely reduce completely reduce means parhydro parhydrogenation that means you, you fully saturate the molecule. So, then you can get what is called also decaline. Okay. Now, decaline can exist in two forms one is a cis decaline this is what is a trans decaline not the cis. So, the trans one I first added then I, I write the cis one 
So, in the cis both the hydrogens are either beta or alpha you can write the alpha also both alpha or both beta. So, in trans it is beta alpha or alpha beta and here it is beta beta or alpha alpha I have added the I have just drawn the beta beta and here beta alpha. The numbering system in decalin is like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, it follows the numbering that is used for the naphthalene system. Remember naphthalene system we jump from here 4 goes then 5. So, the ring junction gave, uh, was given the numbering at the last. Okay. So, this is how the numbering system goes in case of decalin. So, that will be the same here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now, let us try to draw the conformation of this. How do you do? Suppose, this is my A ring and this is my B ring. So, first write the B ring in the chair form. Okay. So, this is the B ring in the chair form and suppose this is my ninth carbon and this is the tenth carbon. Okay. So, this will be 8, 7, 6, 5. Now, I have to see what is the status of the hydrogens at the 9 and the 10th carbon. The 9th carbon the hydrogen is beta that means, you put the hydrogen. So, that is hydrogen and in the, that is beta. So, it is a beta axial and that is alpha axial. So, what are the remaining bonds? The remaining bonds are there like this. So, now you complete the other chair form. So, this is the A ring. So, that is what is trans decalin. Now, an interesting point of trans decalin is that if you want to it is a very rigid molecule. If you want to flip it, it is not possible. It just stays into it. You cannot flip this molecule means you cannot really flip into other chair forms. Flipping means conversion of one chair into the other. So, if I want to flip this that means, if I suppose try to flip it. So, concentrate on the ring B. So, flip the ring B. So, B if you flip the ring B, so what will happen? 7 will come here and 10 will go to the top, 10 will go to the top. Okay. And where is your 9? This is your 9, this is your 8, this is 7, this is 6 and this is your 5. Okay. So, after flipping this is the scenario. So, where are the hydrogens now? The 10 hydrogen was beta, 10 hydrogen with respect to this, uh, the 10th hydrogen was beta axial with respect to B. Now, after flipping the 10 hydrogen, uh, let us see whether I am in the correct path, 10, 10 goes here, 9 is there. So, we are talking about the 9th hydrogen, 9th hydrogen is beta axial. So, now it will become beta equatorial this is okay. And the 10th hydrogen was alpha axial. So, the 10th hydrogen will be this side. Okay. So, that is alpha equatorial now and this is beta equatorial. Axial becomes equatorial, equatorial becomes axial, but the beta remains beta, alpha remains alpha. Okay. Now, you have this carbon bond left and this have another carbon carbon bond on this side. Okay. So, your task is to now, so this is the carbon 10, so this is your 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this one carbon is here which is attached to sorry, uh, one carbon is attached to the 9 and your fourth carbon is attached to 10. So, now this C 4 and C 1 you have to attach, but they are moving towards opposite direction. So, it will be not possible because you have only two more carbons that is C 2 and C 3 to attach these two carbons C 4 and C 1 via only two carbons. So, the distance is, is, is much more than that. So, you cannot have a only two carbon chain to connect C 4 and C 1 and that is why you cannot you cannot flip this form. So, this is a completely rigid completely rigid molecule. Okay. There is no question of flipping because this connection needs a longer chain, but you have only C 2 and C 3. So, that is a very short chain. So, you cannot connect this part. Okay. So, that is the trans decalin. In case of cis decalin, 
the situation is little different in case of cyst acalin the situation is little different let us see so again suppose this is the b ring and this is the a ring so you draw the b ring you draw the b ring and then you put the numbering also suppose this is your uh, suppose this is your 9 this is the 10 and this is 8 7 6 5 so at 9 you have a beta hydrogen so beta hydrogen means it has to be axial you know in order to have it beta and then at 10 you have beta also beta hydrogen so this will be like this now you have the carbon carbon bonds okay so this is the way you draw the rest of the ring it's little tricky but i think with practice you can you can do it so what i have done first draw the b ring and then put the the numberings put the hydrogens hydrogens according to the alpha beta nature say so, and according to that alpha beta nature these are already fixed that means axial or equatorial is determined by their action, alpha beta nature so once you have the hydrogens you connect the other carbons and you get the the other ring of the ring a so ring a is in this type of chair so it is lying in a vertical fashion and this is lying in a horizontal fashion okay now this molecule question is whether this molecule is rigid or not this molecule is not that rigid this molecule if you flip it so you flip the first the b ring so when you flip the b ring so it will look like this is your b ring so 7 goes here and then 6 is here 7 comes here 6 is here 5 is here then you have 10 you have 9 you have 8 okay first you have to put the hydrogens the hydrogens at 9 with respect to the ring b was axial beta axial so 9 will now be beta equatorial okay and 10 with respect to this ring b here it is very important that which is your reference ring because if you look carefully this hydrogen is actually equatorial with respect to ring a but and this hydrogen is axial with respect to ring a on the other hand with respect to ring b they are completely different this is axial with respect to ring b this is equatorial with respect to ring b so what will happen now 10 it was earlier beta equatorial now it will become beta axial okay so now you have two at other atoms okay so two now you have the other ring atoms so unfortunately the way it is uh, drawn that will be one is connected to one a 10 is connected to 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 so it does not look like a chair but it is a chair actually what happens a chair if you look from the if you look from the front side like this so it will look like a hexagon so this is exactly like that so because this is like this i can make a model of this and then show you the exact situation what is happening here so let us make the cis decaline so cis decaline means cis decaline so you have um, you have this is cyclohexane but you have only only 5 minutes okay so i'll try to be quick let's see if i can make the the cis decaline i can show you the cis decaline then that will be clear so four carbons are needed four carbons i have put sorry this is breaking let's see how many carbons here so this is six carbon this is one two three four five six seven so one extra that's why this looks little bit deformed so now it will look like very good uh, this is one three so there are some mistake here again i have to make one two because this decaline the decaline is so oh. so carbon atoms were okay only it was one three okay i think this is now fine so let's see what is this what is this molecule this is a this is a cis decaline molecule how do we know the way it was presented earlier the way it was presented earlier 
uh, was like this. The red, let the red ones be hydrogen. So, I put the hydrogens here. So, one hydrogen at the ring junction, the ring junctions, I put the red, red balls. Okay. So, they are the hydrogens. So, these hydrogens will change their axial equatorial orientation. So, this was the our starting compound and once I once I do the flipping. So, this this went up and this uh, sorry this is once I do the flipping. So, flipping means this is ok 7 7 goes down. So, I let us see whether I am drawing the right one taking the right one or not Maybe I am taking this one. Uh, maybe it is difficult to match with this this is the uh, this is the cyclohexane, but you can see the cis form because this is a cyclohexane chair and this is a cyclohexane chair. So, they are both cis. Now, you can flip this molecule how to flip this you take this up and you take you have to take this down you have to take this down. So, this chair is now is now inverted and you have to invert the other chair. So, this is little complicated like a simple cyclohexane. So, when you do this flipping, so again I repeat. So, what I do I take this down, I take this up and then I take this down. So, all these things when I, when I do then I have this changed figure. Okay. So, this is the this is the flipped form again I do the the original one original one you have to bring it down and bring it up okay. and uh, this is becoming a chair, but yes now this is becoming a and this is becoming a boat now it is becoming a chair. So, this is the original one this is beta axial with respect to this ring beta equatorial with respect to this ring, but this is with respect to the a ring this is equatorial and that is axial. So, when you flip this this is flippable molecule. So, you can flip this goes to the chair for a boat form and then you you do this you change the other carbon yes. This is little not that flexible like the cyclohexane simple cyclohexane and make sure that the other is in the chair form. So, this is the case. Okay. So, this is flippable this can be flipped. Okay. However, difficult to show both the rings in the chair form. In order to do that what you do if you now give it a 60 degree rotation of the B ring. If you give a 60 degree rotation you know I have shown that it changes in this direction it goes into the mirror image chair and if it goes into the mirror image chair then where is the carbon 9? This is the carbon 9 and this is the carbon 10 after a 60 degree rotation and then this will be you can complete the other things this is 10 this is so that will be 8 that will be 7 that will be 6 sorry that will be 7 that will be 6 that will be 5. Okay. And now what you have in 9 you have an equatorial hydrogen no problem at 10 you have an axial hydrogen that is also okay. but the beauty is that now you can show the whole thing in both the rings in the chair form. So, this is your B ring and this is your A ring okay. both the rings in the chair form. So, this is the scenario. So, this is cis decaline is can be flipped whereas, the trans decaline cannot be flipped. Regarding their energy difference in trans decaline if you think of this ring B and if you ring if you think this ring as A. So, this substituent and these substituents are like the two methyls when you have dimethyl cyclohexane, but since these two methyls are in the equatorial position. So, they are not putting any extra gauche butane interactions here. Similarly, these two these and this are the di equatorial substituent of this ring, but because they are in the equatorial dimethyl substituent of B ring but since they are in the equatorial conformation in the equatorial orientation. So, they will not put any extra butane units here okay. no extra butane units. whatever butane units are there remember this is already taken care by the cyclohexane ring and this part the, in the mutual earlier in the in the dimethyl cyclohexane you have a mutual mutual gauche butane system, but here that is taken care by the 
whole cyclohexane ring. So, you do not have any extra gauss butane over the two cyclohexane rings. What about here? You have now this is interesting, this is axial with respect to this chair form. So, this is one gauss butane unit. So, that is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you have 9, 1, 2, 3 is one gauss butane unit and you have 8, 9, 10, 4. 8, 9, 10, 4 is another gauss butane unit. Okay. And this is equatorial, so that will not give any extra. On the other hand, now this substituent, uh, the, this substituent is, is axial substituent with respect to B ring. Earlier we have considered the substituent these and that with respect to A ring. This is equatorial, so it did not impose any gauss butane unit. This is axial, so this introduced two units. And what about this one now? Consider the other substituents, consider the B ring and thinking that one is a sub C1 is a substituent and C4 is a substituent. So, C1 is equatorial, no problem, it does not introduce any extra, but C4 introduces 4, 10, 5, 6, 5, 6, and the other one is 4, 10, 9, 8, but that is already there uh, 4, 10, 9, 8. So, that is a common. So, you do not take the common. So, the diff ultimately what happens the energy difference is basically. So, which one is more unstable? The cis is more unstable because it has got excess energy. So, the energy difference cis minus trans is equal to 3 into 0 0.9 kilo calorie per mole and that becomes 2.7 kilo calorie per mole. Okay. So, that is the conformation analysis of just at the very preliminary stage of cis and trans decaline. Okay. So, you have to, you need lot of practice in order to draw the conformation and then turn it around to show both the in the chair form. Okay. I think as the time passes as you grow uh, as you, you will become matured with practice and finally, it will be much easier for you to draw these molecules in the proper geometric shape. Thank you.